What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports and today we are working on my dad's truck. You can see it up here on the lift. The reason I bought this truck, I love this color. I love this color, but he wouldn't sell me his, so I had to buy my own. But we are working on, dad you got some rust starting here. Oh, yuck. All right, I'm not concerning myself with that. I would love to slam this and put wheels on it, but he doesn't want to do that. What we are doing today, though, is look at the pinion seal back here. We're going to be replacing that. And um, in order to take this out, uh, you got to take a couple things apart. And then we are going to use the method to just mark the nut and um, try to put it back in the same location. That way we don't have to disassemble everything. So uh, not a whole lot to this other than uh, marking that. That's probably the most important part, but we'll show you guys that as we go. The first thing we need to do is we need to get these 11 millimeters out. Now you can use a standard as well, but I'm, I generally use 11 millimeters to get these straps off. And uh, then we'll pull the drive shaft out. You're probably gonna need something to pry with. I've got a big pry bar we'll use. I'm sure this thing's never been off, but um, we're gonna get it apart. We'll kind of show you guys through the process and hopefully we can uh, address all this leaking. Look at that, getting pretty bad. Let's go grab some tools. So the first thing we're going to do, obviously I said take these 11s out, but he's actually gonna drain a little bit. There's a drain plug on the bottom of this, which is weird because mine doesn't have that. Either the stocker end doesn't have that and the one that I put in it doesn't have that, I don't believe. And so we're gonna take this out, drain some of the fluid. Actually, we're just gonna replace the fluid as we go. Um, I don't think you're in there square, Dad. Okay, yeah, no, you're not. You're gonna strip it. Probably been in there for hundred. For this truck was new. Um, anyway, we're gonna drain some fluid because the fluid is actually at a higher level. So once we pull the seal out, we're gonna have a big freaking mess. So uh, just best to drain. You can pump some fluid out if you're not gonna replace it, but this truck's never had the fluid change, so we might as well do it while we're while we're at it. Three hundred and some thousand. Miles. Oh, it's got four hundred and something. I guarantee it. The gauge quit working. What? and then you replaced it. So I don't know, we don't know how many miles it has on it. That fluid looks pretty good though for that many miles. Well, All right. Lake and I put new in it. Oh, well, there you go. So you just keep recycling the fluid. There you go. That's how I do oil changes on my 52. <laughs> just pour new in when the old comes out. All right, like I said, we're gonna grab an 11 millimeter and pry bar and get this thing loose. All right, so I'm just using, generally these aren't under a ton of torque. So just a quarter inch. 11 millimeter or even a ratcheting wrench and there's enough room under a truck you should be able to reach all of them without spinning the axle around yeah I probably should use my impact I guess I think it's 32 millimeter on it yeah I've got a 32 I hope it's deep enough so now that we got those 11s out I'm going to put my pry bar in here and we're just gonna kind of pop on this thing and see if we can get it out of here. Like I said, it's been in there for a minute, so chances are it's probably, oh, that's not as bad as I thought. Now you can go ahead and pull your drive shaft completely out if you want to. Um, we probably will just to get it out of the way, but then we're going to go ahead and mark this. And the reason we're marking it is because, like I said, that's the way we're gonna try to set it back in the original location. Otherwise, um, I'm not a, I don't set up gears for a living guys, nor do I want to, um, but this gets it back to where it was at from the beginning. So we're cleaning it up with some brake clean so we can put a mark. We're gonna put a mark on the center, the nut, the actual yoke itself, the collar, and then the rear end. So we're gonna put a mark all the way across just to make sure. And then we're also going to count the threads that are showing. And the reason why is if I have to use an impact to knock this thing loose, um, we want to make sure that it goes on the same amount. So, you know, it could be a quarter inch back further and what we think is tight, but um, most people, what they do is if we can get it loose without an impact, we can count the amount of turns that it takes to take the thing off. Looks good. So what we've got now, you can see we marked the housing, the collar, the yoke, the nut, and the actual pinion itself. So there's a, we used a black one on here. I used a silver here. Uh, we couldn't see the silver very good on the nut since it's silver, so use the black there. And then we also counted the threads. Like I said, if we have to use an impact to get this thing off, I don't think we're going to have to because we got enough leverage, but, uh, and I got a pretty long breakover bar, but we're sure going to try. Now we're ready to loosen this nut. 
So I was able to put a 32 on it, 32 deep, and uh, was able to get it loose. So now what I'm going to do is we're gonna count how many times this passes um, this area. Just like I said, uh, if you have to impact it, that's why we marked it and counted the threads, but I didn't know whether we'd be able to get it loose by hand. And uh, actually, I didn't even have to use a cheater bar on my, um, I don't even know what this is called. I don't even know why I'm, I can't even think. What's this called? Breaker bar. Breaker bar. Breaker bar. I can't, I don't ever use it, so I don't know what it's called. Anyway, um, I was able to get it loose without any kind of cheater pipe on the end of that. So like I said, we're going to count this, how many times it takes to get off of there. And then we're going to put our puller on and see if we can get this out of the way. So it took 11 times. Now yours might be a little different, but that's what it took in order to get that um, all the way off. So in order to get this thing off, you can see we've got um, just a puller on there. And so we are going to push this thing out of place and um, shouldn't take a whole lot. We're reusing the strap bolts um, just because we know they fit. I'm sure that I have a set in the kit that will work, but we're gonna pull this yoke off and then we should be able to get to our seal. Shouldn't take a whole lot to get this thing off. Of course, I say that, it'll probably make a liar out of me. I don't know, it's not. Coming? Yeah, I probably could, probably could use my impact. are loose so now that we've got that loose there is a washer under that nut by the way this is the seal that's leaking and so we're gonna grab the seal puller and pull this thing out of place all right so we're gonna use our seal puller here and see if we can get in here and get this thing started or just pull it out in one go uh, what we're gonna do I'm gonna wipe out this clean this area up a little bit uh, just I don't know I just I'm probably a little too picky but clean this area out and then we're either going to put a little bit of grease on the um, new seal if it's a GM one which I'll list that part in the description down below if it's a GM one it comes with grease on the inside but I like to put grease on the outside um, just to make sure that it goes in smoothly so now we're going to need the new seal a little bit of grease and I'm going to use a rubber mallet probably to tap that thing in place so we got the new one here ready to go in Got a little bit of stuff on it and um, as I said when you buy the GM when it comes with grease on the center which is good so we're gonna see if we can tap this in now what we're looking for is for this outer ledge to be flush with the rear end so we're gonna try to use a rubber mallet sometimes sometimes a rubber mallet does all right sometimes it doesn't nope we're gonna have to use a hammer All right, we're gonna tap this all the way around. I'm probably gonna to have to change hammers until it's flush. So as you can see, it's all flush now. Uh, knocked it in, ended up changing to a, a actual hammer as opposed to that rubber mallet just wasn't getting it done. So we're gonna use these lines to line things back up the way it was before. And I don't know that it's that imperative, but the word is that if you don't get it lined up the same way, it could have a little bit of a vibration. So we're just gonna put it back in the same manner it came off and remember there is a washer and then we counted now we counted 11 so we just want to make sure that we get 11 back going down and that's it actually came off right at an even 11 so we're gonna go that many down so we got one two three we're going to count it all the way down to 11 and uh, that should be as tight as we need it we're not going to torque it or anything we should be set at that point we were able to get it 11 and actually when it came to 11 uh, just shy of 11 threads on it got tight right here so we went ahead and used the uh, breakover bar to tighten it the rest of the way to where these lines all lined up but we are back in place so at this point guys go ahead and fill your rear end back up and um, if you if you chose to do that option sometimes people just pump out um, enough to get it below this threshold some people just let it leak out but if you did let it leak out or you took it out obviously fill it back up to where it needs to go and then we're going to clean all of this off so he can make sure that this 
fixed his issue, but I think it's going to I think it's going to be the fix. We're going to get it back together, slide the drive shaft in, and get um, the straps back in place. At this point, we've got everything back in place, um, everything tightened down. Guys, do not hammer down on these 11 millimeters. They don't take much. As a matter of fact, I think it's 18 foot pounds. So, as you can see, um, they just they're not going to take a lot. So you'll snap the head off really, really easy. That's why. Um, when I first started using the puller to pull this thing out, I was kind of worried about those because they're not real great as far as uh, strength goes. But all finished up and I uh, cleaned this all up with some brake clean just to make sure that he can tell if he's got a new leak and hopefully that fixes his problem. I would say from the looks of things, it's definitely going to fix his issue, but uh, we're all done. Let's get this thing off the lift. So guys, at this point, we've driven it down the road. Everything was great. Uh, no noises, no whines from the rear end whatsoever. And um, yeah, we're good. So not actually too bad of a job. I was kind of dreading it because I've never done it before, but uh, ultimately pretty easy job to be quite honest with you. I think if you count those or measure how far down that nut goes, I don't think you're gonna have any issues whatsoever. The rest of it's very, very simple. So as you can see in the video, but guys, I've got everything back in here in the shop, well, with the exception of the 54 I'm gonna put right here, but he just left and love helping my dad out because you guys know if you've watched this channel very long, he's came over and helped me not only hang all these lights, but do all the wiring in the shop. I mean, anytime I call him, he comes over and helps me. So I love the chance to, uh, to just pay that back. And we've got more stuff to do on his truck. Um, I actually called a buddy on that rust spot on the rocker. I think that's gonna drive him nuts. He's a lot like me. Although that is his daily driver, he still tries to keep it clean. That's probably the dirtiest I've seen it in a while. But uh, he's probably gonna get that rocker fixed. He actually is going to take the 4.3 and V6 that we pulled out of the green truck here when we did the V8 swap, and we're gonna put that in his truck. The other thing he has is um, obviously that T-bucket over here in the corner, which you guys will see more of, but he has an SSR and the transmission is bad. So we're gonna be putting a transmission in his SSR at some point. So uh, if you guys did enjoy this video, if it was informative, uh, please go down there like always and smash that thumbs up button. Guys, everything we used will be listed in the description down below. So uh, if you guys need to do this project, don't worry, this can be done in a garage. You don't have to do it on a lift. As a matter of fact, I went back and forth about moving the stuff. We were just gonna do it on the ground, but I thought, well, it might be a little bit easier to do it on the lift. But with all that, guys, if you're not subscribed, please go down there and subscribe. And while you're down there, make sure you ring that bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video. And stay tuned to see what we work on next.